So we're going to uh, uh, welcome back to horsemanship, uh, beginning horsemanship, a little bit about prep. Uh, we just finished the showmanship, uh, so we're same day, 15, 20 minutes later. Um, I want to approach this. I encourage everybody to, to kind of approach horsemanship the same we do showmanship or any other pattern stuff. You know, you got to do a little warm up. You've got to do a little prep. You have to have a plan. You've got to know where you're going and how you're going to get there. That is basic to everything you do, even riding the pleasure. You got to warm up, have a plan. Where, where am I going to position myself? Same here. Where do I position myself? How am I going to start? You know, the whole the whole routine has got to be up here in your head and know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and when you're going to do it. So uh, back to my little favorite triangle and cones. Uh, the pattern is going to be a straight line pattern with a, uh, a stop and a 270 in it. Uh, and a stop and back. Uh, so this may not appear to be a good warm up. Brent, we're doing circles in a triangle to do a straight line pattern. The point is the purpose of the warm up is to get your horse focused and in tune with you, you in tune with your horse, and, and prepared to, to do the maneuvers. So and how to, to, to execute whatever's thrown at them if they didn't have the pad. The only thing I'm going to encourage them to do is they know in the pattern there is a stop in 270, a stop and back. So they need to do a couple 270s. This, the pattern is a 270 to the right, but they need to kind of do a right and a left. Turn your head and look where you're going, know where to finish. Find the spot on the, on the wall that you're going to stop turning at. Um, horsemanship is the same as showmanship. A lot of it is presentation uh, and, and doing the pattern as accurately as possible. The goal is to do it exactly how it's drawn. Um, this pattern will have a square corner in it. Squares are not round, so they need to kind of work while they're working on circles. They can pick a cone and make a square turn. Uh, if you're not practicing square turns in your everyday riding, you need to. It is, it is absolutely one of the very best things I've ever learned. It teaches how a horse how to stay slow, how to hold their hocks in the ground, how to lift their shoulders, get their front feet out of the way, and a very clean, crisp uh, presentation and maneuvers. So. Okay, now as I'm watching the ladies warm up, I want you to pay a little bit of attention. I'm big on shoulders and hand position. Um, Rosalind's shoulders are pretty square, but I'd like her right elbow to be bent a little more so that that hand is just a little higher. She's carrying a little load down towards her saddle. And I'd like Lisa to bring her hand out a little bit. It looks like she's holding her belt buckle. She needs open to open up. her hand. Your, your yeah, arm's not broke. Hold your belt buckle. <laughs> your arm's okay. not broke. <laughs> You don't have so, a stomach to hold in anymore. No, no. That was when we were, yeah. Yeah, so oh, move that right hand away from the side of your body a little bit. And it's what I right refer up, to as move a like a flower. Um, I want you to think about opening your breast bones. And then consequently what that's going to do is that's going to pinch your shoulder blades. And it basically lifts your whole torso and... If you can tell any difference, go back and watch Lisa and some of the earlier ones. She looked like she was slumping a little. 
when she opens her breast bones and pulls those shoulder blades together, she sits up a whole lot more. And her hand now is much more where I want it. Lisa's in the gray. For those of you that didn't remember, Lisa's in the gray. And so uh, I wanted, she's now got her right hand a little better and not looking like she's holding her belt buckle or headed to the bathroom about to throw up. <sighs> Okay, Brent, you ready to start your warm-ups? Uh, the warm-up's done. We're going to the pattern. Okay. Now, um, you'll notice Tanya is probably going to ride her horse two-handed. Uh, he still is a junior horse. And so in the horsemanship patterns, while it is not necessarily our favorite, she will probably show in a snaffle bit in two hands so that she can have a little bit of steering because he doesn't quite have the turnaround that we'd like to have and neck rate. So as she's doing this, you'll watch Tanya showing two-handed. Brent needs one more bucket. Thank you, sir. Now, as you are walk looking at this pattern, and I'll see what Brent wants to add. As I'm looking at this and I'd be explaining it to my clients, you basically need to stop with your hip at... Have you seen this? That last cone to turn your two Walk. 70, assuming that the judge, uh, excuse me, assuming, <coughs> assuming that ring Crap. master that management off. has set that last cone off to your left. Unlike the because showmanship, you stop beside it, you the cone, not in front of the cone. Next to that cone, and it's to be a straight you line, got it, honey? not an angle. And then when you get to the cone, you're going to back four steps. So that initial point. Where okay, you walk, trot, sh horsemanship to the arena, please, and line up along the east wall. We're expecting three exhibitors. All age, walk, trot, horsemanship. I should have had you do that. Um, Any questions about the pattern exhibitors? Okay, Brent, why don't you bring Rosalind or I don't care who you bring and bring them right here in front of the camera and talk about their position and how you want that to hang for the entire pattern. Uh, face that way just a little more, Rosalind. At an angle there you go. Parallel okay. to the wall. Over right there. there. Okay. Okay. Um, Remember that horsemanship is a contact sport. You do not show on a full drape, okay? If your horse is over bridled a little bit, vertical, behind the vertical a little bit, it is okay. This is contact. You want to, you want to make every maneuver imperceptible. You can't see what you're doing, okay? The, your your rein hand should never be more than two inches away from the saddle horn, no matter what you're doing. Okay, so she's got plenty. Lift your hand. She's got contact. She's three or four inches. This horse doesn't require that, but she's so she's got plenty of contact and a good presentation, starting at the front. Um, you want to be perfectly vertical. Your heel should be right underneath your hip bone. Think about playing tennis, okay? You're not going to you're not going to play tennis on your heels. 
okay, and straight leg. You're going to have your legs bent a little bit on the balls of your feet and ready to make a, a change or you know, change in direction. You've got to be mobile, okay, uh, and balanced. She's very balanced. She's got her heels down, toes up, ready to do something. She's on the balls of her feet. Uh, she, you don't ride your horse's head. You don't drive your car at the end of the hood, okay? You don't ride your horse that way either. Yeah, you, obviously you're hearing me talk about looking up, having a plan, know where you're going. This girl will, has a, a little bit of bad habit of looking down and riding right in front of her horse. Where she's at right now, she's looking at me out of the corner of her eye. I want you to look a little more straight. You got your head turned a little bit and right the there. Yeah, everything is in perfectly line from the back of her head down through her shoulders. Her back is vertical. Her hands uh, could be up a little bit. She would have moved them up during the um, during during the pattern, but she's sitting there with a lot of confidence. Knows how to do. She's expecting to do a good job. She has everything planned out in her head, and you can almost that first impression we talked about. You look at this girl and said, "I'm anxious to see what she's going to do." She. She gives me the impression she is prepared to do a good job, and I expect a lot out of this presentation, okay? Now, she can go away. Yep. The other two are, are going, are, uh, I'm not insulting them. These girls, you can't insult them, number one. You cannot embarrass them. But... <laughs> Reality is... Gravity changes things. Okay, very well put. Gravity changes things. It's uh, our, our, our back muscles, our, our core muscles, our leg muscles are not as strong and tight and uh, that can make that same presentation as a little 13-year-old girl can. Okay? Um, I have used Lisa... As an example, um, uh, she is nowhere near as old as I am. I, I don't want to embarrass her, but uh, uh, she has worked very hard in the last year and a half or two years, has lost a lot of weight, and there is not a woman her age and her age group exhibiting that can outshow her. Her posture and her presentation is full of confidence, and does it look the same as the 13-year-old? No, okay, it can't. It can't look as good as the 25-year-olds that weigh 120 pounds and just left working the gym two hours a day, you know, for the last week. It, it's a, a reality, but she does the very best, better than the best she's got with what she work, got to work with. Yeah, she knows her limitations, but she works very hard to overcome them. If you watched her warm up or at the horse shows, she is a little bit relaxed. She doesn't carry herself quite the same frame as she does in showmanship, horsemanship, or even act, okay? She figured out how to cowgirl up for 10 minutes and make all us old men think she's 35, not 25, but not 50, okay? And she is all about showing to the best of her ability. And that's all you can ask out of anybody, okay? Tanya, Tanya, uh, Tanya's story is, is, is completely unique to her. Everybody has unique story. Uh,
the world show 2020. Um, gave me a call. I happened to be friends with the reigning trainer, and they said, Call Brett. And uh, uh, he called in August. He came the first part of September. And can you get me ready to go to the world show? Yeah, I can. Brett's going to have an opinion of himself. I can do it about anything. Yeah, I can do it. So she came. She came. I'm going to make her cry here in a minute. It's actually speaking. She came with a horse that was stripped. And I have learned in my age and experience, just to be honest, I don't sugarcoat much. I am straightforward. Julie and I have a secret. Do you like what? Horse, I said, I can get you ready. I'm going to spend a lot of your money. She said, Okay. I spent the better part of 10000 in three months on her horse. If there was anything that could be done, we did it. If there was a blacksmith that needed to be done, if it was good for six weeks, we did it in four. There was nothing that we let undone. Uh, uh, despite all that, I don't want to say the horse was sour or used up, but he was very temperamental. Yeah, uh, and could be somewhat unpredictable. Um, uh, we ended up retiring. And her emotions is mine. Uh, we donated, donated him, or she donated him to a therapeutic riding center. Uh, he had an accident. In the last couple of weeks, and broke a navicular bone, and she just had to go put him down. She still owned him while she donated him to him, and she just put him down this week. And it's a lot of memories. It's it's how she got started with us. That horse put her back in the saddle. Um, we bought another horse for. Her. Um, is that one did not work out because of some lameness and confirmation issues. We just put him down three or four months ago. And so that's why she has a new horse. The reason for the story is back to presentation. Tanya, while being very positive and very determined to be competitive, there's some unconscious things that holds her confidence back. Okay. When she rides, She's improving every day. I think everybody would agree with that. There's several people here that know her. She gets better all the time and her confidence keeps growing, but she has a reason to be tentative, okay? So her posture and presentation, while it's very good just sitting there today, has not always been like that. My point is, be fair to yourself, but be honest with yourself and objective and figure out what you can do to be better than what you were yesterday. And it's all about you. There isn't another coach, trainer, exhibitor, horse, anything that's going to make you better without you doing the work and doing your own, you know, being better on your own. So my point is I've got three ladies here, a youth and two ladies. All completely different presentation, all completely different style. Have trust and confidence in your judges. They will be evaluated on what they do and how they do the pattern and how they do the maneuvers. It. I judged my first horse show when I was 16. And I, I don't mind telling you, I'll be 69 in May. In my lifetime, conservatively, I've judged over 500 horse shows, probably more like a 1,000. There was a number of years that I judged 15, 20, 25, 30 shows a year. Um, with the event of the last 30, 40 years of multi-judge shows, I've probably judged with another 500 different judges, okay? I can promise you there has never been anybody 
on my card or any other judge's card that has won a class because of the clothes they wear, the saddle they ride in, okay? Um, I am going to offend a lot of people, women. My sister-in-law sitting here makes a living selling show clothes. Women have made this a fashion show on horseback, okay? It's ridiculous of what we have to deal with. Does not impress judges. It's all about women, okay? Um, uh, so, to further my point, back to presentation, it's what, how well you're a team with your horse and how you execute the maneuvers and your posture and how you show your horse. It's not your clothes and your tack. I'm sorry to disappoint people. I'm sorry my sister-in-law probably won't talk to me for a week um, or a month. Uh, having said that, Tanya does not get to come to a horse show in the pants she's in and she enter the arena. It, you don't get a show in those. So um, that's just Brent talking, trying to give you some insight and some confidence that you're better than what you give yourself credit for. And there's ways to, to continue to improve and, and impress the judges to where your placings can, can move up. And it's not things that a coach can teach you, a horse can teach you, a trainer can teach you, or your checkbook can improve. It's all up here and in here, commitment and passion. So. And a side note is Joni and I are going to be doing a few sessions. Okay, we ready? On we all know the pattern. Getting ready for showing on a budget as far Youth as before good fitting clothes and show us how to do it. Set the idea. standard. So that look for that in future episodes. Let me, let me get in line. Now, as we're going through this, I'm going to encourage you to be ready at the cone. These judges do not want to. Um, Don't want to wait. Wait. Okay. Can I back the other two horses up a little? You really need to bring your other two horses over can, here. Can you girls move over here for so us? So they can see the first cone. Um, you know, just as yeah. I said, you only get one chance to make a good first impression. And if you're not standing at the cone, projecting to that judge, that whole energy of I'm the one to beat, you're just picking second place from anybody else. So you have to have that. That first cone go. should be in line. Do I need to move it over? Are you good with it? Okay. Um, along with what Julie just said, all three of these are clients. They know my philosophy from a judge's point of view. I despise people not being at the cone ready to show, not wanting to go first, hanging back, waiting, want to be last. Okay? My philosophy, and you'll see a lot of our students be first in the in the pen my philosophy is if i've done my job they've done their job and they're prepared it does not make any difference when you go and i i want people to beat me i don't want to have to play catch up and beat somebody else the other part about this uh psychology of showing is if we lay down a great pattern and people applaud or clap for them and stuff and they're all sitting there watching oh crap that was good i don't you know i've got to step my game up they get nervous they get scared and when those things happen they make mistakes and i can promise you in a thousand shows i don't even begin to know how many shows i've been to or how many judges i've shown to it happens way more than what you might think, you know, and there is a huge advantage to being first. And uh, so don't be afraid. If you've done your homework and you're prepared, step right up and say, yes, sir, I will go. I'm glad. I'm proud to show my horse. You're here to show your horse anyway. You just paid several hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to be here. 
Why wait? What are you waiting on? You can't fix anything. There's nothing going to get better standing watching five others go or 10 others go ahead of you. What's going to be different? You know, your horse is going to be sleepy and it's going to be tired. If your first horse is fresh and you're fresh and you're ready to go. Okay. So and that's basically what we're telling you. And if you're, okay. if you're hearing this and you're listening to this, there's a whole lot more than just being prepared for the pattern. There is a whole lot of a plan, your emotional preparedness, your, your mental. mental preparedness. Physical. There is just a lot that goes into becoming a top end competitor. And you figure that out and you ha you figure out how you get yourself emotionally and mentally prepared to go in there and show your horse the best they can. All right. Now Rosalie can go. Okay. So the previous scorecard had a mistake on it. So show committee made us wait till they got the errors corrected from the time before. She's been standing at the code cone 10 minutes ready to do her pattern she has fell asleep or you know if you know Shaq at all he's been asleep for eight of the 10 minutes you know and so uh in preparing she's still going to be first she still knows the pattern she still knows she's going to be good very subtle without making a big uh, uh deal of it she has rolled her spurs on him checked him in his ears are focused on her. He is ready. Let's go do something. So don't just stand there and fall asleep. Now it's your turn to go. Oh, well, let's go. You know, she's prepared. She's she's thought through how she's going to do from the very first step. All right, child. Yeah, maybe I lied. Chef was still had to be woke up from his nap. She is looking straight ahead. She has found a mark on the ball that she is going straight to. Stopped right at the cone, shoulder cone. Not the best 270, stepped out of it a little bit. Her legs never moved, her back never changed, her hands never changed. How was it? Okay. Absolutely. Okay, I need you lengthways along here because their head is right. Well, he's, I, I want to yeah. say he's had a long day, but he hasn't. Just like you're there. Yeah, you go. exactly. Rosalind, stand against the wall like you're in a pleasure class. Let's see what you got, baby. little slow on his jog off. I'd like to see her shoulders pinched just a little tighter so that she's getting just a little uh, more showy of a um, presentation. That trout off is better than the first one. When she pulls back, if you watch this and you enlarge it, you will see that she is Bending her wrist for the first pattern, her back a yeah, little. other than I practice to actually to sit and do a walk top pattern, I'm not offended. Okay, you okay? What, what we learned out of that two minute exercise is we still have to, we still have some things to learn about him. Um, Driving the car, you drive 15 to 20 feet ahead. You make plans ahead of time. You don't wait to get to the stop sign to stop. You start stopping before. You still take your foot off the brake and you accelerate before you reach top speed, okay? My point is you, you always ride two to three strides ahead of your horse, okay? Takes that long from your brain to tell your hands and feet to 
figure out from his belly to his brain to his legs to make him work takes at least that period of time. The more practice the older get, the more experience they get, that time can shorten up. They know what's coming before it gets to them, okay? Him, we're still figuring out. My point is, she waited till she was about right here, almost the cone, to start spurring him to get him to trot. What do you want me to do? It took him halfway down there to figure it out. If she would have started walking, now that we know, we're going to start asking for the trot way back here, knowing that he, you know, because the goal still is to trot at the cone, okay? Not before it, not a half a mile afterwards, at the cone. When his shoulder gets there, he needs to be jogging. So instead of getting mad at him for not paying attention, you got to think about what he's thinking about and how, what can we do to make him better? We're going to ask sooner. It's very simple. I don't think we told anybody how old Flash is. Flash is 19. So he knows before she knows what he, she's going to do. If you don't believe me, just watch. Right at the cone. Perfect timing. I would have liked to have seen her tip her head just a little more as she's going through the curve that 270. Okay, as a judge, because I don't know the pattern, or I forgot exactly what the pattern is, one girl trotted after the 270, the cone, and she just walked. So now I'm scrambling. Who trotted? I can't. No, you're. <laughs> Yes. yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. So I'm questioning myself. What was the pattern? Time out. Stupid judge doesn't know the pattern. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I tried to convince my third grade teacher that I was quiet. I couldn't do it to her either. <laughs> Mrs. Everhart. <clears throat> now she's got her head tipped. She's looking where she wants to go. Points him. Cross off. Good stop. Maybe she went past the cone just a little bit. Good. Okay, lift up. Um, and lift up and put the happy? blades together. For the most part, the only thing that I uh, I would like to see you improve, you trotted an extra step past the cone. Cone was at your leg, you were a little, if I'm going to be ultra critical, okay? You can't get away with that in June at the World Show. Most of your weekends would have been okay. You might have been second or third instead of first. You know in June there's no room for error. You cannot make even a minor mistake like that. And that's not a mistake. It's just less than perfect, okay? Um You've seen her do two patterns in a row now. Her body position, her, her confidence has never changed, has never wavered. This girl, number one, knows she's good and is a, out to prove it to everybody else. Her other competitors, judges, parents, coaches, trainers, Brett and Julie. Mom and dad because they pay the bills. Okay. Um, uh, Rosalind's been with us three years, four years, four years. Um, um, she's, she's 
had some help outside of us uh, that has been very bad. But uh, this is what we strive for as coaches and trainers is what this little 13 year old can do as well as the others. You know, she's got a big show record. She is about to have a lot of fun. Uh, she's got a, sh a good show record for problem horses, you know, either soundness or mental problems, but you've done extremely well with what you've got. God only help us if you get a good, you know, one that does it participates willingly. So. much better position for her to start her trot. Huge improvement by pre-planning. Outside leg push, left leg, left leg. Now poke him hard, make him go. There. Okay, is your horse saddled? Okay. But this is probably going to be our last go through. Ten times better than the one five minutes ago. Yep. Yep. You have one more. Um, You're going to do the next pattern, aren't you? Always keep in mind. You're not writing for today. You're writing for tomorrow. You're learning how to get better. How do I make my horse better? What do I need to work on at home? And uh, I can't stress enough, be nice to your horse. Just ask for more. Don't tell them. Don't demand it. Just ask. We have a plan. I've got a plan in my head for the next, till the next time Tanya can get back and ride. Things I can work on to help her and make him better for her that lets her be better. And... Uh, Every, everything's a learning situation, and today is a great example for that horse. You know, we've learned so much in, in an hour. Get up. Rod spurs, clothes, spurs, ball spurs, and occasionally depending on what moves in, we may have to use a spur. But this early in the spring season, who's going to get a little guy right now? Mr. Judge? Yes. The pattern specifically said back four steps. <coughs> Mr. Judge, how much would you deduct for them, even if it was a good back, and she backed probably six or seven? I would not. Uh, exhibitors and uh, mom and dads that are professional, uh, owner individuals, would that them back two or three steps extra. As a judge, I want to see them back. Okay? If they back four or five steps, six or seven steps, I don't want them backing all the way to the other uh, cone, you know, but four or five, six steps you know, is does not offend me. I want to see the horse back willingly, straight, without a lot of demand and extra effort from the rider. Okay. So we're ready to start the walk, trot, canter part. Yep, I was going right? to say. So Joni will need a little bit of time to right. warm up. Do you need to have a little time to canter? Five-minute break. Well, I'm going to leave this run so everybody can okay. see them. All right, warm up. Thank you, ladies. You guys so did great today. Up, it is our plan. You're going to get to know our ladies. Um, I'm yes. going to do an interview with each Don't one of us so you find out what Don't is going to happen. Don't change a thing. You know, my um, comment about the spurs, we know we may have to uh, at some point so in time, but no. Uh, is, and he is losing hair. He looks a lot better than he did just two weeks ago. 
and I, I, are I would tell you don't body clipping. We're going to do some very basic no. elements of any of these individual classes, yep. not just a clinic. So yep. we're letting gonna sweat work a when it's bit 65. On how to teach your horse to set up. Let him wear a winter blanket till he how gets you teach wet. Your horse to yeah. Uh, and you teach your horse I'm sure you already have. I can tell that you have, but. Um, we're Don't be afraid to give him a good bath. To do some very detailed really? segments wow. of this. So uh, that, uh, use some sort of a fungicide, you know, a fungal type. You're going to be given some great ideas to work What's on. matter over here? But most importantly, do not oh. to fill the night. You can't get a horse out. And they didn't bother him outside day. that much. In an hour and a half, oh. it's repetitive. They need to learn it. Um, they yeah. need to do it over and over again, so they don't have no. to think about it. But on the flip side, they don't have to do. I it told so you the last time he looks better than I've seen since you've owned him, and so he genuinely does. Yeah, work I, consistently and slowly yeah, he and looks, steadily to teaching them a transaction he, he, instead his, of trying his, to crash course them I, with an all night. Yeah, you know, it's clear he's he's more. He just looks healthier. Now, it's uh, your feeding programs work, your supplements, what you guys are doing. Uh, it may not be exactly what I'm doing, but don't change it. I've never changed it, right? From what? Never changed it. Really? Yeah. And then I've got him on the osteopathy, which he has been on. But, you know, it's yeah. a yeah. time to work. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, he is, he, he's, he's happy, he's comfortable, and he looks great. I still think you should buy the other horse and keep it in reserve. I, I still have bills to pay. I need customers. Okay, Brett, do you know this pattern? Sure. I have it right here. Let me turn the page. Walk trot, 270 trot, canter, stop and back. Huh? Here you are. You haven't seen it? Yeah. Okay, they're laughing about the pattern, and anybody that's here. I, I, that I didn't know her mom was sitting up there. You, can do you got to get up way early in the morning to get ahead of this little girl. I mean, she's she is witty and on top of it. Class without knowing the pattern. To look at us with a blank stare on your face, what's the pattern when these things have been printed out for two weeks is just about the kiss of death. With either Brent or I to have to last you minute turn cram it and into make you in about three or four minutes. Yes. That is just your little bit of trivia for today. Is it just the two of you? Yep. Unless Janice wants to saddle up and ride walk track canter horse. We can go get Fiona down. real quick. <laughs> Just a little bit of trivia in case you guys don't already know this by looking at them. Anybody want to guess who's the dad of both of these horses? Yes, they're both gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, that's all they have. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, out of both out of very different mares. The one that my sister is on in the red is um, out of a rugged lark mare, and this one's out of a uh, pleasure bred mare. So oh, that's why they ass. look very, very different. Dream. It wouldn't make him move any faster. 
Okay, Brent, you want to go over the pattern and what spots, if there's anything in particular that is going to plus them at a maneuver? Or the, uh, it's the, actually very simple, but the uh, planning how we need to pick our points on this. Uh, walk, trot, 270 at cone C, trot to D, square turn, Lope to the till you're even with cone A, stop and back. Okay. Um, As you're getting prepared to do this, and you make that square corner over there, they're getting more towards patterns that are not necessarily using cones to identify where that maneuver has to happen. You have to geographically plan proportionally where you want to do this. So if you look that line going across the arena from your 270 is approximately the same line as half or from cone two to cone three. So you plan how long you want to trot before you make that turn. When you make that turn, you fixate your eyes on something, some object, that you are going to ride to so that that line is straight and you don't waver as you come release. down your lope line. I may, we may want to go start putting a little bit more spur on him. Can you, can dad interchange, take those rivets out and put the pokey ones in? Okay. Okay, you ready? We'll talk about that later. Are we ready, ladies? Jack's not. If you're sitting here watching him stand here while she's like begging him to go forward, she's interfering with his nap time, obviously. Very simple pattern. Not a lot of difficulty to it. It can be very technical. Think of patterns, two things to think about when you're doing patterns. Number one, um, think of it as uh, ice skating competition. You've got your uh, requirements or the technical parts. You've got the first presentation is mandatory maneuvers, okay, that you've got to do. The second one is a little bit of freestyle and you get to add your own presentation to it. Um, patterns are very much the same way. You, you can't win if you don't do the, the, the required maneuvers in the, in the proper sequence. So that's gotta be first. You've gotta do that before you do anything else. Then you get to add your own little personal personality to it okay so why this one and julie brought up a lot of are starting with just a start cone and you get to do the rest somewhat freestyle you can make it really tight and small you can make it big and easy somewhere in between this pattern's got a little bit of both you've got to walk from a to b jog 270 at C, then you've got a jog, and the pattern shows a square turn. You're going to make the turn before you lope off. It shows trot and lope. Well, you can't lope in the middle of the of the 90 degree turn. So the question came from Rosalind: Do I lope before the turn or after? Make the jog and then pick up the lope in a straight line. Now. Her, pers uh, her, her personal touch gets to come into it is how far does she trot over here and, how, and where does she lope down? It says stop even with A. So she, we know she's going to stop up here. All right. Judge's point of view. I, I want to see her as far away from that wall as practical. Okay. That's not jog two steps and end up in the middle of the arena, okay? But she needs to experience 
Rainers say to be 20 foot off the wall. I want to see her 20 foot off the wall. Okay. That wall is not a crutch. Go lay down. Go lay down. The wall is not a support. It, it, she's got to get away from that, free and independent of that. So, how she does her square turn, if it is a true square or if it's kind of a rounded square, okay? Uh, the more square it is, the more I'm impressed. Okay. How, and turn. if it's straight, if she's paying attention, she's picked out that chair, the post between the two of you sitting, she has found a point to go to. She's not down here watching and say, oh, crap, I've got to stop. You know, she knows where she's going to stop. She is looking directly there and knows she's going to stop at that, or that post in that cone. She's not going to look over here to see where the cone is to stop. She's going to see this post. She's surveyed the playing field to know what she's got to do. While she's okay. standing at that cone waiting to start her pattern, not paying attention to the person that's in front of her because they may do it wrong. wrong. You're Correct. going to plan your own pattern. Yes. Never trust the person in front of you to do the pattern correctly. Most of the time you're safe, but don't do that. No, don't do that. Hey Brent, I asked, how do they make a square corner down there? What are the maneuvers to make you, a square corner? You're, you're going to be looking where you're going. You're going to turn your head. You're going to lift and just move their shoulders over. You're not going to drag them around. And this is where you practice. You heard me say in the warm up, if you're not practicing square corners, you need to. You know, and, and a lot of it is two-handed, just like Tanya was doing. Lift them up and turn them over. Lift them up, turn them over. You know, make those shoulders get up and out of the way. They're not going to do it the first time. It is not easy for horses. They want to be lazy, heavy on their front, not lazy, heavy on the front, and it's not easy for them to lift up and turn. We've got to teach them that, and you can't teach it to them. In an hour, a day, a week, or a month, it's got to be something as part of your uh, daily workout, weekly workout, uh, training, uh, all of that. You know, but you want to look for that turn. You got to turn your head. Horses follow your eyes. Find the point you're going to and get there. Okay, and it's got to be snappy and almost like military. The second thing I was going to say about patterns, why they're like ice skating in my mind, they're also like the opera, okay? And Julie somewhat laughs at me sometimes, but believe it or not, I have been to the opera with her. And that's another story for another day, but I have been to the opera. Um, opera start out kind of slow and kind of build and build and build and build and reach a crescendo and kind of stays that way and then comes to an end. Patterns need to be the same way. Think about what I said about judges' barometers. Okay, I'm sitting here looking at her. Wow, I'm anxious to see what this girl's got to show me. Okay, how do you impress at a walk? All right, how you're going to impress a walk? First step, walk. Okay, and it's not the quarter horse chicken crawl like you just can't put one foot in, the, in front of the other. Horsemanship. I want to go someplace. I'm a cowboy. I got cows to chase. I'm going to ride for 14 hours. I don't want to just travel three miles. I'm going to go. She's going to walk right off. This is not pleasure. This is horsemanship. Show me what you can do. Okay. So she's going to walk. I want that. I want that. Next thing, okay, my my opera's building a little bit. My thermometer's going up. One, two, and she's jogging. She's at the cone, okay? My opera's building a little bit. Wow, she's getting good. I'm, you know. Uh, hey, Mr. Judge, you're missing the 270. I know. How was her 270? 
<laughs> Wait, I just, I just blanked out for a second. Hey, what didn't you like about that whole thing? Well, I was going to say, after the trot, what? Okay, so our next exhibitor did watch what the previous one done and just took a deep sigh because there's nothing that I can't that I can't do wrong enough that I can't beat this one. I have got this one won. All I got to do is sit here and not make any mistakes. So we'll see how that goes. You did you didn't you'd forgot that I'm a mind reader, didn't you? Slow down, don't get in a hurry. Just FYI, this is the class that this woman is set to herself as a mission to win this year at the world okay. show um if there was anything you would like to improve upon what would it be i would have liked my transition out of my turn to be a little smoother a little wonky his okay. head was up in the turn too he didn't yes, just we are working on that to, yeah. to the low head drop. this horse i thought just to help good. everybody understand I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead and finish. Then I'll go no, finish. I thought that he did. I thought he transitioned well into my lope. Very good. He loped very straight, I think. Yes, he did. You were my point. <laughs> Man, you got to pick better points. The Before I put my two cents worth in, Julie explained to me when we started these that I needed to be objective, okay? And I'm going to be prejudiced and selfish at the moment. And I, 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 that's the prettiest horse doing the pattern. He is absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't quit looking at him, you know, and I look at him every day. We all know, understand the deal. But, that jog and that lope was just on the verge of being breathtaking. He is so cool that if you need any confidence at all to get better, you've got the prettiest, best horse on, uh, you know, that you've ever had under you, and you've had some had good horses. horses. Th this one is going to make it, you know. So, um, can we thank? Can you thank the owner for? Absolutely. Day? Yep. Thank Miss Julie Hinton, Hinton. for yep. releasing this yep. on a whim. <laughs> this is the, the you know, okay, now, grateful. I want two minutes, though, to say where his origin was. He comes from a 4-H production program down in Texas. In Texas. The lady that owns broken. the um, Rugged Lark Mirror, uh, Lee Imhoff, uh, she has for, I'm going to say, five or six times bred to Gentlemen's and Roses because they have a 4-H production program that you show them as a weanling and yearling and two-year-old in their 4-H program. And most all of the horses that they have used have been Gentlemen's and Roses horses. And that's where Eli's came from. Came from. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Plus one. Zero plus half. That's how I school on him. He, the, this is a schooling. There is where you want to stop your horse and make him understand he can't lope on his own. He can't think for himself. He's got to wait. And 
side note from that is, is this is, a, this is the type of thing that would happen if you have sat out in the makeup pen and practiced this pattern uh, for 20 times to make sure you've got it right. Huh? Because that horse is that, that was a little better. He drifted this way. Going to do okay. And it's going to sell you out. Joni, go, wait a minute. Go away. Yeah. So you practice, especially with older show horses. What, what you bit do you have on him? Parts. Okay. You do not practice the entire pattern at the horse show. My thermometer in the opera failed with this one. She was good plus one, and then she fell apart. She's got the beginning down. There's another plus one. Now, some people would question my score. She didn't stop with her shoulder at the cone. Because it's a tight arena, if she did, she would have hit the cone. She had to give herself room to trot and canter and stay away from the, the wall, okay? So I'm going to give her credit for knowing how to show her horse. I will not penalize her for it. Um, Last week at the clinic I did, the question came up about things like that. Where do I stop? And there is no answer that is 100% right, except you got to tell me what you're doing next. Because where you stop or change, or do something, is determined by what you do next. Where are you going to go? What does the pattern say? You know, how do I have room to show my horse? Okay, so that's where planning, having the bus route, know where you're going to go, how you're going to get there, and and when you're going to, you know, when you're going to make the changes becomes vitally important. Analyze the pattern on paper. Visualize in your head where and how you're going to do everything and then execute it, you know. And if there is a case for practicing the pattern, that would be it. So you can run through it and understand, okay. In the new patterns where there are no cones, you're the only one that knows that you didn't do it according to plan. If you just adjust the rest of the pattern, you, nobody knows. You don't tell them yourself that you made a mistake. Make us all believe that's exactly what you planned on doing, and you're doing it better than any of the other competitors. You know, you, you know it's, I guess the point I'm trying to make is there's a lot of variables in, in some of these, especially patterns, how you're going to do them. You can't do the same thing over and over by by the book because right. there is no book. They, right. Some of the other kids that I used to have a long, long time ago, they do the pattern as prescribed so that they knew geographically where they wanted right. to do something. And then they do what they call jumble it up. So they trot where they needed to walk. They would canter where they needed to. They don't, um, the horse so the doesn't horse anticipate. Was waiting on them for each and every maneuver to tell them what they were going to do, and they didn't like learn and think ahead. Presentation is good. Confidence is just laying everywhere coming from her. It's a good thing we're not at the rodeo and bulls. That red would be flashing red. You'd be attacked. Open that door. Way good. Now, when you get ready to rope, check, check. There. That was all that warranted, not two or three of them. Your, your little stop was not real cool. Yep, 
and he kind of walked a step. He dribbled. Okay. You're down to one time for each one of them, and you're closing, Mr. Harnish. Last chance to impress me. I love you, Rosalind. Rosalind, pick your hands up just a little. You got pleasure reins. Pleasure hands. Everything is a learning opportunity. What I want you all to learn is one of my basic philosophies in training horses is you do the opposite. If they want to drift right, you go left. If they want to go left, you go right. If they want to go fast, you go slow. If they want to go slow, you go fast. What she did, I couldn't have told her to do any better. If you want to slow off, she went back. And she just did a, an extended trot through the whole thing. That is maybe that is telling him, you've got to wait, buddy. Don't get in a hurry. I will tell you what I want you to do when I want you to do it. And but she's not sawing on his face, she's not ripping on him, she's not spurring the daylight out of him, she's not making him angry. I really want to use the keyword, but uh she's no. Do it this way, you know, and he will get it figured out. I promise you, you know, he, he, he's ask her, he's a unicorn, he doesn't make mistakes, he's misunderstanding what she wants him to do. She'll get it straightened out, okay, Johnny. I want you to do exactly the same pattern you did a minute ago. As you watch this, pay attention to how quiet Joni's hands are and how little movement she's got in them. That type of thing is something you need to strive for. Okay. Okay. We have a good afternoon. I hope everybody, as I have said every time, I hope you've learned something out of it. Um, Do not go back and tell your trainer that this is what we said. We're just right. giving you ideas, opening thought processes. You know, giving you a different perspective of how to get better. The uh, one of the analogies I use, I, I think I sh I've shared multiple times, is that I really like college basketball, college sports in general, but basketball in particular. And I think about Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan, after practice, when he was in college, after practice, and everybody else is gone, he shot a hundred free, he had to make a hundred free throws in a row with his eyes closed. If he got to 98 and missed one, he started all over. Had to make 100 in a row. My point is, horses learn by repetition. Joni, you know, she's struggling a little bit with his turns. He's very green. He did not come as a horsemanship horse. Uh, we're adding that event for him. But I don't want him to turn 100 times but every time she rides him, when she reverses, if we're practicing pleasure and she reverses, she is going to pivot. You know, she's going to be off the rail and pivot one and a half or two times or 180, just change direction. 
not a long sweeping show reverse. We're going to start practicing more of the horsemanship every time we ride. Their stops are going to be when she says, Whoa, he puts his butt in the ground. It's not going to be a rainer, it's not going to be spiking, but he isn't going to walk, dribble two or three steps before he comes to a walk. Okay. Add those elements. Think about the maneuvers, just like I said, the showmanship, I said in horsemanship. You can only do seven things walk, rock, hand, stop, back, turn right, turn left. All you can do. You need to incorporate that in your daily riding. Don't just go to the rail and ride, walk, rock, canter, turn around, walk, rock, canter, and say, I rode my horse. You need to work them, put them in the middle, get them comfortable doing that. Make them do that. Make them do pleasure in the middle. Make them do horsemanship on the rail. <coughs> we have guests from Michigan. I'm going to complain. We have equitation one week, it's horsemanship on the rail. The next week, it's horsemanship pattern and the act on the rail. Okay? You still have to do the pivot on the rail. You've got to turn. You've got horsemanship on the rail. It doesn't mean that it's just pleasure and what you go around. you got to practice. you got to be prepared for whatever comes your way from the judges. So practice all of it. We'll practice the other. Trail, if you're showing in trail and you don't have 50 logs and, and four gates and five bridges and, and a, a huge trail thing, just go set four landscape timbers dinner, that cost you eight bucks. You can jog over them, you can mope over them, you can back through them, you can side pass, you, you can do every trail maneuver. Over poles with four poles. Okay, you don't need to be like some trainers that have hundreds of dollars invested in training. I'm getting thirty bucks. I don't know if you can see her. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, two landscapers, <laughs> landscapers are standing up on a piece of rope is your gate. You don't have twenty bucks invested in. You know, so let's practice that stuff. Every time you ride, do elements of what you're going to compete in. Okay? Do the extended trot. Mope with speed. Uh, back the yield. Back a circle. Uh, back the L for trail. The back the yield is for horse to step and back. Do the forehand turn. I don't care if you got a western saddle and bridle and you're concentrating on that. All of them, hey, make them do the forehand the turn. Practice all of the maneuvers that are reasonably to be expected in the events you're going to compete in. If you do that and make a commitment to do it with your eyes closed a hundred times during the week, you're going to be successful. Okay. And it's not because the clothes you wear, the saddle you ride, or the trainer you ride. And you get, everybody can do this. All right. Now, next month, um, we're going to have beginner trail. So we're going to just take a few uh, small obstacles and uh, walk you through beginner trail. So watch for that and our announcement on it. And then we will be adding, as I said, short elements of some educational videos regularly onto our YouTube. So we hope that you will subscribe to us on YouTube and watch our videos. Thank you for spending the afternoon with us. Bye.